Hello dear students, I welcome you to the second session of Atomic Structure. In the previous session, we learned about the Bohr's Atomic Theory and its limitations. In this session, we are going to study about dual behavior of matter and radiation, de Broglie's equation, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and its significance. You know that one of the major drawbacks of Bohr's theory is that it could not account for the dual nature of electron. What is this dual nature? Dual nature means electron can behave as wave and as particle also. But Bohr considered only the particle nature of electron. We know that the light or radiation exhibit dual nature. The phenomenon like reflection, refraction, interference, diffraction and polarization exhibited by light can be explained by treating light as waves. If we consider light as particle then only we can explain the phenomenon like photoelectric effect and Compton effect. Thus, light exhibits dual nature which means it behaves as waves and sometimes as particles. In the universe, the energy is manifested in the form of matter and radiation. There is a statement, nature loves symmetry which means that if radiation exhibits dual nature, then matter also must exhibit dual nature. This idea was perceived by Louis de Broglie and he suggested that moving particles should exhibit wave-like properties under suitable conditions. The wave associated with matter particles are called as matter waves or de Broglie wave. According to de Broglie, every object in motion has a wave character. But the wavelength associated with ordinary objects like ball or bus etc are so short because of their large mass that their wave properties cannot be detected. The wavelength associated with electrons and other subatomic particles with very small mass can be detected experimentally. Now let us derive the de Broglie's equation. It can be derived by combining Planck's quantum theory and Einstein's mass-energy relationship. So let us consider the Planck's equation E is equal to H nu. Call this as equation number 1 and the Einstein's mass-energy relationship E is equal to mc square. Call this as equation 2. Since the LHS are same we can equate equation 1 and 2. We will get h nu is equal to mc square. Call this as equation number 3. We know that nu is equal to c by lambda. Hence, by substituting for nu, we will get hc by lambda is equal to mc square. Cross multiply this lambda and mc square. So we will get the lambda is equal to h by mc. Here c is the velocity of light or photon. So let us replace that by the velocity v of the particle. So we will get lambda is equal to h by mv. So this mv that is product of 
mass of the particle and velocity of the particle gives you the momentum of the particle so let us represent it by p hence lambda will be equal to h by p so in general for any particle of mass m moving with a velocity of v the de broglie equation becomes lambda is equal to h by mv or lambda is equal to h by p let us do a problem based on this de broglie's equation here it is asked that calculate the wavelength of an electron moving with a velocity of 2.0 into 10 power 4 meter per second so they have given the velocity of the particle and asked you to calculate its de broglie wavelength so let us consider the de broglie equation lambda is equal to h by mv we know the value of h that is planck's constant and the value of m m means mass of the particle here the particle is electron and its mass is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg and they have given the velocity in the problem itself so by substituting all those values we will get the lambda to be 3.63 into 10 power minus 8 meter The next concept is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. According to this principle, it is not possible to determine both the position and momentum or velocity of a moving minute particle at any instant simultaneously and precisely. Let's understand the concept of uncertainty principle imagine we are going to determine the position of an electron using high frequency radiation radiation means it consists of photons when the photon of the radiation collides with the electron both its position and momentum will be disturbed since the mass of the electron is very small so simultaneous accurate measurement of position and momentum of electron is not possible so mathematically we can write this heisenberg uncertainty principle like this that is delta x multiplied by delta p is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi where delta x is equal to uncertainty in position delta p is uncertainty in momentum and h is Planck's constant if delta x is very small that smaller the error in locating the position of the particle delta p would be very large that is uncertainty regarding the momentum will be very large and vice versa this mathematical expression can also be expressed in terms of velocity of the particle so like delta x multiplied by the momentum of the particle can be written as m delta v greater than or equal to h by 4 pi so we will get delta x multiplied by delta v greater than or equal to h by 4 pi m where delta v is uncertainty velocity and m is mass of the particle 
now let us see the significance of uncertainty principle the uncertainty principle ruled out the bohr's concept of existence of definite orbits for electrons and it suggested that it is possible only to predict the probability of finding an electron moving with a particular velocity in a given region of space around the nucleus at a given time the next one is the effect of uncertainty principle is significant only for the motion of microscopic objects like uh, electrons and is negligible for that of macroscopic objects you can observe this in the next problems we are going to work out the first one an electron has a speed of 200 meter per second accurate up to 0.001 percent what is the uncertainty in locating its position and they have given the mass of electron in the problem the solution is so we need to find out the uncertainty in velocity so delta v they have given the percent accuracy in determining its velocity so we can uh, calculate the uncertainty in velocity by 0.001 divided by 100 into 200 which gives 0.002 meter per second so this is the uncertainty in velocity according to heisenberg's uncertainty principle delta x multiplied by m delta v is equal to h by 4 pi so the uncertainty in position can be written as h by 4 pi into m delta v so substituting all the values given in the problem we will get the uncertainty in position to be 2.89 into 10 power minus 2 meter so if you observe this value it is somewhat significant so since the particle is a microscopic particle that is electron so the uncertainty principle is significant for these subatomic particles the next problem is a cricket ball weighing 100 gram is to be located within 0.1 angstrom what is the uncertainty in its velocity they have given the uncertainty in uh, in position so according to heisenberg's uncertainty principle delta v is equal to h by 4 pi into m delta x so substitute the values given in the problem so we will get the uncertainty in velocity to be 5.27 into 10 power minus 23 meter per second so you can observe in this problems that the uncertainty principle is significant for only microscopic particles and for macroscopic objects the uncertainty principle is negligible with this i am going to end this session in the next session let us learn about hydrogen atomic spectrum thank you